Hello, so today we're going to try and make it so the inventory doesn't look crap. Right now it looks like this and that's just awful. So we're going to go ahead and try and fix it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try and fix it with the extremely loud sound of my mostly deaf uh, landlord catching up with our family. So if you hear people being loud in the background, they're not being angry, they're just mostly deaf. So this is what we would like it to be in terms of how much size it takes up, a one by one meter brick. But as you can see, this is much too large, and there's not enough room for text or anything. And we're going to have some items that are larger than the mech, and some that are like the size of the mech's big toe, and we don't want to have them take up a different amount of space on the screen. So what we need to do is we just need to scale all of these objects to fit within that one meter box. To do that, we need to get the bounds of the collider of the inventory object. Now, the rigid body itself does have a collider object, but that actually defaults to the collider on the rigid body, and unfortunately, as you might remember, our space inventory here, the rigid body is on the outer object, whereas the collider is on the inner object. Now, in terms of how that functions when you're actually running into stuff, that works great, but if you just want to fetch the bounds, you actually have to go down into the child of the, uh, uh, of the inventory object and grab it. So because of that, we're going to go and make a uh, inventory object um, variable. And that's just going to grab it from the child. So um, get child, get component and children, collider dot bounds, like so. And we're going to go ahead and just test to make sure that worked by saying debug.log item.bounds. And we're just going to see whether or not that works. I didn't want to pause it, I wanted to hit play. Yep, that works. And you can see how large the objects are by just looking at their bounds. And you can see the extents of this one, 1.11 and 1.2, and the extents of this one is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So we want to bring everything down to about 0 0.5. That'll give us a little bit of room for text. Um, since we can scale the camera, it's easier from our perspective to think of everything as taking up an exactly one meter box. And if we want each of those meters to be larger or smaller on the screen, we'll just scale the camera. Um, or rather, it, you know, make it show more or less. So uh, we're going to find the largest, largest of the three um, uh, parts of the bounds. So float largest equals math f dot max item dot bounds dot x item dot bounds dot y item dot bounds dot z, and that'll just give us whatever number is greatest. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say item.scale, oh, no, item.transform.localscale equals new vector 3, 1 divided by, uh, we'll just go ahead and divide it here. There we go. Largest, largest, largest. Um, now that actually is going to end up being too large because I want to scale it to one to have to 0.5 not to one um, hmm. oh it's not bounds it's uh, it's not just X it's actually um, extents dot X there we are sorry I forgot that bounds is actually a a, uh, a three-dimensional object with more than one coordinate that's okay though so now when we hit tab, you can see that they're both more or less the same size. Now they look a little bit like different sizes, and the reason for that isn't because they're actually different sizes, it's because they have different shapes. If we go down to the menu camera, come on scene, come on, you can do it. No, you can't do it, okay. You can see that they both are the same size, but one of them is simply taller than the other. And that's close enough for our concern. We don't need them to all look exactly the same. We just need them to occupy the same amount of space. But this is a little bit too large, so let's make them a little bit smaller and also show them from a slightly, a slightly different angle. So here, we're going to change this to point 3, and we're also going to have the item look. Item.transform.lookat. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and say position plus vector three dot forward plus vector three dot right plus vector three dot up. 
Uh, we don't need that one. Well, I guess that might work. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right. So that's not a very good way to do it. They're a little too small now, but at least we can see what's going on. Um, you can see that looking t looking in that direction is a little bit awkward, but we can polish the exact direction they plan to look. Uh, however, however we would like at a later time. For now, I'm going to just divide this by two and make this 0.5 again. I think that that will probably work out when they're tilted. Yeah, that works. So now we can see these objects at the right size, and they are exactly one point away from each other. Of course, the camera covers too much, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the size of the camera to four, or maybe even to three. But in order to really do that, we've got to stop that, take it out of play mode. Uh, otherwise they won't save. So now you can see that this pops them up just fine and you can still click on them just like before and then drop them from space. But you know what we're missing? Something that tells us what the hell they are. So before we, we're not actually going to get to the part where we're going to display that but we need to have it ready to be displayed. So to do that, well, I need to fix the, well, well, whatever. To do that, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and um, make it so that the inventory object has a couple of variables in it that are what we're going to be needing in order to display. And so public string um, um, screen name. public string description and uh, we might have some other things that we need to do but that'll do for now so I'm not sure how long this episode has been if it's short I'll probably post the next one right on top of it um, but it's been a pretty simple episode all we really did was scale the items so that they are in roughly the right spot oh you know what we could do before we go, let's go ahead and put these uh, in the right spot, because as you can see, we've got the situation where they're actually starting up in the middle of the screen, and that's not the best place for them. Here in position, we actually need to change this so that it is not um, simply new vector 3. Instead, it needs to be uh, camera.viewport to, to world point, and our viewpoint is, uh, viewport is new vector 3, 0, 0, 0. And then we add the vector 3 to it. There we go. And that will mean that we'll start in the upper left rather than starting in the middle. Or we might be starting in the lower right. Um, I don't, can't remember. Lower right. Okay. Or lower, sorry, lower left. Uh, the Y is upside down. So what we actually want to do is make this a 1, and we want to make this a 1. Um, and make this a 1. Do we want to make this a negative one? Yeah, there we go. Sometimes I get Y mixed up because it's going the opposite direction when you're in screen view and a different opposite direction when you're in world uh, world view. So it's you know, Y is a little bit confusing. You never can tell whether it's going up or down unless you've memorized everything, and I, I really haven't. So now it all works out. We've got this correct size and everything. Um, and now there's a big question as to exactly how we're going to deal with uh, putting text up. And we have a couple of options. One option is that we can make it a big button and use the on GUI uh, to detect when they're being clicked. And that's actually the better of the options available to us um, in most situations. I'm not sure that's the better option here because we're also using the input mouse down in other situations that aren't on GUI uh, and they might get mixed up if we start to cross our wires so we may change that. Well either way we'll deal with that in the next episode.